Okay, good morning to all of you. So that this slide is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, okay. In our earlier classes, we have discussed that um, uh, this testing um, of software is performed at four different levels. First, unit testing, then integration testing, system testing, and regression testing. We have already seen unit testing, then we have seen the different techniques for uh, integration testing. We have also seen the different techniques available for system testing. Now we'll continue with the last level of testing, that is regression testing, okay? It is very important from industry point of view. So let's see the briefly, what do you mean by regression testing? So by regression testing, that's not when hello any yes so whatever you are So your voice is breaking in between. Uh, yeah. Earlier, again, uh, again, it is not. Again, if once uh, error has been correct, again after recompilation, it is not coming, not, not appearing once again. So, um, so regression testing is a testing which is done to ensure that. A system update, or whenever you are making any change to a system, it does not cause any new errors, or it does not reintroduce any error that has been corrected earlier. That's what it is meant by regression testing. Also, if you are making some changes to one particular component or one particular module of a software, you are integrating so the other modules or other comp components of the software they are not affected by the, the change you have made so that's why after um, uh, every integration you have to perform regression testing so after every integration testing you must have to perform regression testing now let's quickly see about the need for the regression testing so any system during its use it undergoes frequent code changes because you require maintenance the Requirements are changing, so you have to change the software, may mean the requirement specification or the design or the coding. So any system during its use, it undergoes frequent code changes. And these code changes, you know, I mean, that means due to maintenance, you have to change your software, you have to modify your software. You know, there are three kinds of maintenance, corrective maintenance, adaptive maintenance, and perfective maintenance, isn't it? Corrective means whenever uh, any error is coming, you are fixing the error and due to that fixing error, so no new errors have been in, introduced. That is corrective maintenance. And adaptive maintenance, ad, uh, I think it is whenever you are uh, the, what, uh, changing any software or so any platform, so uh, your software is not affected, perfective. Whenever any requirement changes are there, government changes the policies. So you have to also update your software. So those things are called as uh, perfective maintenance. So those things uh, from any software engineering book you can check. So uh, regression testing is needed after every check. And so whenever you will make any to existing system, you have to perform. Why? Because this regression testing will ensure that uh, the unchanged features they continue to work fine. The unchanged modules or the unchanged functionalities or the unchanged features, they continue to work fine even if the module so the other modules they are not being affected to uh, by the um, by some changes you are making to a specific module so these are some of the needs of uh, the needs for regression testing let's see uh, when you are designing some uh, what uh, test suit so how that can be partitioned so these are some of the partitions of an existing test suit so when you are uh, designing some of the test suits so you see when you are making some change, 
maybe after one month or one year whenever making some change some of the test cases they become obsolete because those uh, functionalities you are not now incorporating in your software those functionalities are become obsolete so you have completely changed them so accordingly some of the test cases set t0 some of the test cases will become obsolete some of the test cases will become redundant that means t1 is doing what uh, thing t2 also doing same thing they are identifying the same error so some of the test cases they will become redundant and some of the test cases are regression test that means you have to add q test because you have modified some of the components so you need to test them you have to add some new test cases these are the regression test cases tr is the regression test cases and t or optimized regression test cases so why optimized because you know in some of the uh, in the test suits some of the tests of the type of failure to do of those redundant test cases then only you will get that optimized test cases because you no know, as the size of the test suit will increase you have to give so much of time to execute them so which will take a huge amount of time so we have to always optimize the test cases because i have already told you the size of a test suit does not indicate the effectiveness of testing you have to see how many test cases actually are really contributing to the detection of the errors how many test cases they are they are detecting new errors so these redundant errors or redundant test cases have to be removed so we have to what a t or that is optimized regression test cases so these are these are full these are full regression tests and out of these are optimized test cases optimized regression test cases because they identify different new errors at least one new error is shown by a test case which is not detected by other test cases so this is called a t or optimization test so this is how uh, um, uh, an existing suit can be partitioned into different sets of test let's see what are the uh, major regression testing tasks first one what do you mean by test rebalancing mean because we are making one existing cases set Functionality are there. You have made change to two, and so for the original program, you have taken ten test cases to test the ten functionalities. But now some of the test, uh, what the components or modules you have only changed. So what will become? Some of the test they will become obsolete. So some of the test cases will remain valid, and some they will become invalid. They will remain, uh, they will become obsolete. So check which test cases they still remain valid and can be used further. Test selection. Identify test that a. could modify portions because i have i am not having sufficient time only i should see that which module is modified that is working perfectly or not so we have the test cases that exist the modified or the changed portions the test minimization i have already told you about this test optimization so, so same thing as test minimization we have to remove the redundant test because some of the test cases they are showing the same errors so we have to remove them we have to remove the redundant test and the test prioritization because some of the uh, uh, we, we since we don't have sufficient time we may not execute all the design test cases so we have to prioritize them based on some criteria so that depending on time say so 70% test cases we could have uh, execute depending on the availability of time so which 70% we have to prioritize them we have to number them we have to rank them so this is called a test prioritization so it prioritizes the test cases based on certain criteria okay so these are some of the major regression testing tasks or activities then how to automate the regression testing so initially we are taking the initial test suit or the initial test data then we are building test for version x okay so there might be the initial version is the best version then we are making some changes to the initial version so we have to first build some test cases for version x then whatever the test that are there we have to run those test cases for version x now what we'll do from the test data we have to build results for version x so when we are taking this version x what we can do we can Uh, we have to build. We have to build the results for version X. So what results? What version was there? What changes we have made? So build the results for version X. Now we have to compare. 
So what are the original test suite? Now after making some changes to the original version, so we have we are using the same test data. We have to compare whether they are uh, what are comparable or not, or what are the differences. Accordingly, you can predict the decision. Accordingly, you can give the decision. So in this way, somehow you can automate the regression testing process. Now let's go into detail. Um, so this uh, this regression testing is it does not belong to either unit test, integration test, or system test. So three important types of testing I have told: unit test, integration test, and system test. So this regression testing does not belong to either any of them. Instead, it is a separate dimension to these three forms of testing. It's completely it is a complete separate dimension to these three forms of testing. So regression testing is the running of the, let's uh, give a informal definition of regression testing, then we'll come to a formal definition as given by IEEE. So uh, let's first see the informal uh, definition. Regression testing is the process of uh, running the test suite after each change to the system or after each bug is fixed. So after you are making a single change, after you are making some change to the existing system, then you have to run the test suite. This is called a regression testing. Similarly, whenever you are fixing some error, after each bug, big bug fix, you have to run the test suite again to ensure that this bug fix, this error does not affect the other parts. So, um, or it does not introduce any new error. So again, you have to uh, run the test. So this is called a regression testing. Second, hmm, regression testing, it ensures that no new bug has been introduced due to change or the bug fix. So whenever you are making changes, so due to this change or due to the bug fix, no introduced to your system. So for that, you have to run the test suit. Now, this is known as regression testing. Regression test, what does it ensure? What does it ensure? Assure, regression test assure that the changed system or the new system is of the old system. What are the existing system? What are the old system? Whenever you have made some changes, its quality, its performance should not degrade. It should at least exhibit the same performance with of the old system. It may perform better, but in no case it cannot show poor performance than the old system. So that's why regression testing assures that the new system's performance, the change, the modification system's performance is at least as good as the old system. It cannot deteriorate than the old system. It also assures that, okay, that uh, um, um, uh, normally its performance is uh, not falling down than this uh, old system. Regression testing, it is always used during phased system development. So whenever you are using any phased system development, maybe your SDLC or maybe your whatever, uh, any phased uh, uh, incremental phase, uh, incremental system software development, iterative software development. So whenever you are using any phased system development methodology, so regression testing is always used, okay? So this regression testing is any type of software testing that seeks to uncover the new errors or regressions in the existing functionality after changes have been made to the software, okay? And what could be the, what uh, changes? I have already told you there are three types of maintenance corresponding to that the changes could be there, such as the, you are enhancing the functionality or you are putting some new patches or the contribution changes or the software platform changes, the operating system changes, whatever like that. So whenever any change is occurring, so it does not, what introduce any new error. See, I have used the word that's why regression. So regression testing is any type of software testing which seeks to uncover the new errors. That's why I'm using this uh, whenever we are changing. So I hope you have already studied regression, correlation, etc. Um, uh, during this uh, what uh, any statistics paper. So the same uh, idea is used here. So with regression testing, so regression testing is any type of software testing which seeks to uncover any new error or regressions. Um, okay, um, so regression testing any, is any type of software testing that seeks to uncover new errors or regressions in the, where in the existing functionality 
after the changes have been made to the software. What could be the possible changes corresponding to the three functional three modifications, corrective, adaptive, and uh, three maintenance, corrective, adaptive, and maintenance, such as uh, um, corrective, adaptive, and perfective maintenance, such as functional enhancements are done, patches are included, or configuration is change, changing, or operating system is changing, and so this regression testing can also be defined as the software maintenance tasks perform to instill the confidence that changes are correct and they have not adversely affected the unchanged portion of the program i have already told you so normally whenever you are performing any maintenance activity you have to carry out regression testing why to instill the confidence that the changes what you have made they are correct they have not adversely affected the unchanged portions or the unchanged uh, um, among the components of the program. Yeah. So if there is something regression testing, there must be somewhat uh, called as progressive testing. What do you mean by progression or progressive testing? I only, only in order to differentiate that, I want to give the definition of what uh, progressive testing or how does it differ, but we will not go into the details of this progressive testing. All types of testing that we have seen so far, such as unit testing, integration testing, or system testing, they are called as progressive testing because as the system progresses, we have to perform some kind of testing. So all the different types of testing techniques such as unit testing, integration testing, etc., they are called progressive testing or developmental testing. From verification to validation, the testing process progresses where, see, that's why the name is prog progressive. Starting from the verification to validation, B, B, B and B testing we have already seen in some of the class. From verification to validation, the testing process progresses where well, it progresses towards release of the product. But what is the intent or what is the objective of regression testing? The intent or the objective of regression testing is to assure that whenever you are making a change, such as fixing the box or what um, um, or you are changing some requirement, it did not introduce any new bug. One of the main reasons for regression testing is that it's often extremely difficult for a programmer to figure out how a change in one part of the software will echo in other parts of the software. You cannot just know you are there are 10 modules, you are changing only module one. How to ensure that the other nine modules they are unaffected? They are not affected by your change. Very much difficult from a programmer point of view to figure out this thing. So this, you can ensure that due to the change that you have made to one module, it cannot affect the other modules. You have to perform regression testing. Regression testing can ensure this thing. Okay, regression testing can ensure this thing. Regression testing can ensure that you are making some change to one particular module. It will not affect, it is not affecting the other modules. Um, that can be ensured by the regression testing technique. So, um, another definition I'm giving, a system under test is set to regress where if a modified component is failed, you have modified a particular component and when you are testing it, that is failed. So many errors are coming or whenever a new component, when you are using it with the unchanged component, it causes failures in the unchanged component by generating side effects that means there are suppose three modules module one module two module three you are changing only to module one huh? or you can let's see there are three modules m1 m2 m3 now you are developing a new module and when m1 m2 m3 they are integrated they are working perfectly but when you are adding another new module m4 to this combination M1, M2, M3, which are perfectly working, but by integrating with a new module M4, you, what you see, it results in failures. We are in the unchanged component. That means M1, M2, M3, I have not changed. They are already existing. I have added a new component only, but due to the addition of the new component, the existing components, the unchanged components M1, M2, M3, they are now showing some failures. And you can say that this is a side effect. I have not changed anything else in M1, M2, M3. I have added a new module M4 or I have made some new changes in the module 4, M4, but it is resulting in some errors in the unchanged components. So who can detect this? So this regression testing can detect this. 
So, uh, um, so when you will say that a system is set to regress, uh, a system under test is set to regress if a modified component it fails, or whenever a new component, when used with the unchanged components, it causes failures. It leads into failures in the unchanged components, in the unchanged parts by showing or by generating some side effects. Therefore, the following versions will be there in the system. Any system you consider, this could be the following versions. One, baseline version. Two, delta version. Three, delta. Three versions could be there. Let's see, baseline version, very simple. The version of a component that has passed a test suit. The original version, you have already tested it, and it has passed the test suit. The, we call it as baseline version. Then delta version means that component which has already passed, you have made a change to it. So change version that has not passed a regression test. The module M1, it has already been tested. It was uh, working perfectly. Now we have made some changes to M1. So this changed version, it has not passed through a regression test. We call it the delta version because this is a minor changes we have made on the baseline version. Delta build means this is an executable configuration of the system under test that contains all the data and the baseline component. So one baseline version that can be several part, uh, delta versions. So delta build means this is an executable configuration of the system under test that contains all the what uh, delta versions or delta components and the baseline components okay so uh, delta build uh, um, is an uh, executable configuration of the suit system under test that contains all the delta and baseline components so we can say that most test cases they begin as progressive test cases that means when i have already told you what is progression testing and what is aggressive testing so initially what test cases you are taking so those test cases uh, and they start as um, they begin as progressive test cases and eventually become regression test cases. That means when you are making some changes, again you are using those test cases. They become what the regressive regression test cases. Regression testing is not another testing activity. Then what is what it is? It is the re-execution of some or all of the already developed test cases. That's why I'm saying these are the progressive test cases. Whenever you are making some changes, you have to rerun them. So that's why I'm saying IT is, another, is not another completely new testing activity. It is the re-execution of either some of the existing test cases or all of the already developed test cases for testing the changed software or the modified software. Now let's go for a formal definition. So according to IEEE definition, it is the selective retesting of a system or component to verify that the modifications that you have made they have not caused any unintended side effects and that the system or component still complies with its specified requirements. So this uh, concepts I have already told you, only this is a formal definition. This formal definition is given by IEEE. So this is the IEEE definition. Regression testing, it is the selective retesting. We are just selectively retesting. We may or may not execute all the full test suit. Out of 100, we may select 70 test cases to run for the modified program. Uh, so it is the selective retesting of a system or a component to verify that the modifications that you have made, um, that they have not caused any unintended effects and that the system or component, it still complies with its specified requirements. It still works according to the specified requirements. So another definition we can also see regarding regression test it can also be defined as the software maintenance task which is performed on a modified program to instill the confidence that the changes that you have made, they are correct and they have not adversely affected the unchanged portions, the unchanged components of the program. Anyway, these are two formal definitions. Very often it is asked in interviews in the examination, what is regression testing? Either you can write down the formal definition or the informal definitions we have discussed earlier, you can write them. So almost I have already discussed what are the importance of regression testing. So still again, it is formalized here. It is these are easy things you can read yourself. Like regression testing is performed in case of uh, bug fixing or whenever there is a need to incorporate a new requirement. Suppose government every year changes the income tax policy. Do you have to write the software every year again? No. 
we have to only modify some of the course to implement these new requirements. So for that, you have to after making the changes, you have to perform regression testing. The importance of regression testing, there are many uh, what importances. So some of the um, importance we have given here. Importance of regression testing is uh, due to the following reasons. This testing validates the parts of the software where changes occur, where you are making the changes, it validates those parts or components. It validates the parts of the software which may be affected by the changes, isn't it? So you are making in uh, change in one module, but uh, you can uh, ensure that all other modules, they are not affected. So it validates the part of the software which may be affected by making the changes in one module. It ensures proper functioning of the software before changes occur, isn't it? Before you are making any change, the software was working perfectly. Then after making any change, you have to also ensure that the software is working perfectly, maybe by uh, uh, what, executing some of the test cases or by adding some new test cases. Another reason is that it enhances quality of software as it reduces the risks and the high-tech bugs. So it is definitely because by, doing, uh, by performing this regression testing, you are um, what, uh, detecting these new errors, it reduces the risks and the high-tech bugs, so it, enha it enhances the quality of the software. So these are few of the um, uh, what um, um, important regions of regression testing. So some of other things you can find out from books on internet, internet resources. Let's quickly test our tech at regression testability. So regression testability it refers to the property of a program or modification or test suit that lets it be effectively and efficiently regression tested. Okay. So what do you mean by regression testability? So regression testability refers to the property of a pro or a modification or a test suit that lets it uh, be effectively and efficiently regression tested. So you, have, you are eff effectively and efficiently regress, uh, you are testing the software um, that we call regression testability. So it refers to the property of a program modification or test suit, which lets it be effectively and efficiently regression tested. It is a function of both the design of the program and the test suit. So this regression testability you can consider as a function of the program design as well as the test suit. Now we'll, a number we'll discuss uh, the, which is associated with regression testing. We call it as regression number. So this is defined as the average number of affected test cases in the test suit which are affected by modification to a single instruction. Please I'm repeating again. Whenever you are making modification to your software, you consider only one instruction. So if you are making a modification to a single instruction, then find out how many, what is the average number of affected test cases in test suit. In your test suit, suppose there were 100 number of test cases. By just making a simple change in a single instruction, see how many test cases they are affected. That means how many of them, they may not work. So, find out the average by making what uh, a single change to a single instruction, find out what is the average number of affected test cases. That means how many test cases they may not work, require some changing to those test cases. So that we have to find out. This is called a regression number. It is defined as the average number of affected test cases in the test suit that are affected by modification to a single instruction. If regression testability is done at early stages of software development, like uh, your uh, requirement analysis uh, or design, then um, it reduces the cost of the development cost as well as the maintenance cost of the software. Okay. So let's, uh, I have already told you the objectives of regression testing, just quickly what uh, refresh them. So first objective is that um, um, this regression testing, um, it tests to check that the bug which is arising maybe due to change or so, um, it, is, it has been properly addressed. Regression testing also finds other related bugs besides the bug that you have detected. It also tests to check on the other parts in the program. You are making change to only module one. But what other modules they are being affected like uh, M2, M3, M4, that also can be checked. So um, another objective is that it tests to check on the other parts in the program. So other objectives also you can write down yourself. These are the important objectives of regression testing. 
So when irrigation testing is done, I have already told you during maintenance. So during three maintenance, I have already told you corrective maintenance, adaptive maintenance and perfective maintenance. So corrective maintenance means when changes are made to the system after some failure has occurred. Adaptive maintenance means you are achieving the new system. So when changes are made to achieve continuing the compatibility with the target environment of the other system, for example, you are right now using Windows, then you are changing to suppose Unix. Or one browser you are using Google, next somebody using Mozilla Firefox. So whenever the environment changes, so oh, whether your software is properly working or not, for that you have to perform testing. I have already told you when changes are designed to improve or add capabilities, like every year income tax policy changes. So uh, we have to change. This is an example of perfect image. In perfect maintenance, the changes are designed to improve or are the capabilities. So these are first um, case when you are making any maintenance activities such as corrective maintenance or adaptive maintenance or perfect maintenance, you should perform regression testing. Then when um, you are using rapid iterative development, then also uh, what you should go for regression testing. For example, when you are using the extreme programming approach, you have known the agile programming. Many examples are that extreme programming, Scrum, DSDM, etc. So um, uh, during the rapid iterative development, such as when you are using the extreme programming approach, you must go for regression testing. The first step of integration, I have already told you, after, after every integration, you must perform regression testing. So first step of integration, rerunning accumulated test suit as new components are added. So each and every time when any new component you are adding, you are integrating, you have to perform regression testing. Then compatibility assessment and benchmarking. Test suits for a wide range of platforms and applications. So in order to ensure that your software is working um, for a wide range of platforms and wide range of applications or wide range of benchmark uh, what um, um, cases or wide range of benchmark applications, you must have to perform um, um, this regression testing in order to ensure the compatibility assessment. Okay. So these are the cases when regression testing should be performed. Now let's quickly say about the regression testing types. So uh, two important types you will see. One is the, uh, or I think, uh, no, yes, two important types are there. Box fix regression and side effect regression, or it is also called a stability regression. As its name suggests, box fix regression, this testing is performed after a bug has been reported and fixed to ensure that the um, uh, it is not uh, causing any problem and uh, uh, the same error is not uh, appearing again. The goal of this uh, type of regression testing is to repeat the test cases that expose the problem in the first step. So what are the existing test cases? Please repeat the test cases that expose the problem in the very first place. Second type is side effect regression testing, which is also known as stability regression testing. It involves retesting the substantial part of the product. Say your product is maybe um, consisting of n number of modules, or 10 number of modules. The goal is to prove that the changes have no detrimental effect on the earlier program. So what are the base program when you are making any changes? Uh, it has no detrimental effect. The performance does not deteriorate. It has no de detrimental effect on the earlier program. It tests the overall integrity of the program, not the success of software fixes. So when you are making some change to one component, the other components are not affected. It tests the overall integrity of the program. Does not, uh, it does not test the success of the software fixes. So these are the two important types of regression testing. Let us define the regression testing mathematically. Let P denotes a program or procedure. The, or you can say that the original program or procedure. P prime denotes the modified version or the changed version of P. S denotes the specification or the requirement specification for program P. S prime denotes the specification for the change program P prime. PI refers to the output of the program P on input I. That means when you are giving input I, the, we get the output P. P prime I, it refers to the output of P prime on input I whenever you are supplying what uh, 
uh, input i to the modified program p i uh, to the modified program p uh, p prime then the what output is p prime i and uh, t is an existing test suit t is equal to is a set of test cases t1 t2 tn it denotes a set of test suit with this now mathematically let us define this regression testing so given a program or original program p it's modified version change version p prime and a given test case t that was used earlier to test p already we have tested p with this given test suit t then what is the uh, regression testing problem um, the, the problem is to find a way the uh, um, the problem is to find a way to utilize the test suit t to gain sufficient confidence in the correctness of p prime we will use this original test suit t to gain sufficient confidence in the correctness of p prime that means the modified program p prime it is also correctly working no errors are there for that we can use the existing test suit t whenever required we may add some few more test cases to see to uh, what test if we have added any new functionalities this is what is meant that this is how we can define regression testing mathematically is regression testing a problem really let's see the following difficulties may occur in regression testing like large systems can take a long time to retest isn't it for large systems the existing have to prepare so many test cases and running so so many number of test cases may take a long time it can be very difficult or time consuming to create the test cases so how many because if for every change you are designing some test cases it will be very much difficult and time consuming to create the test cases it can be difficult and time consuming to evaluate the test cases evaluation is wrong if there are thousand test cases it can be very difficult and time consuming to evaluate the test cases cost of testing can reduce the resources available for maintenance if you will all the resources you will use for this uh, testing then cost of testing it can and surely reduce the resources available for maintenance um, or for other activities there are three important types of regression testing they are called regression test selection test case prioritization and test suit reduction let's see first regression test selection as its name suggests regression test selection if in your original test suit there are 100 test cases we cannot uh, take all the test cases to again run them we have to select a subset how to select that subset subset so regression test selection means it reduces the time required to retest by selecting a smaller subset of the test suit not the full existing test suit we have to take only a smaller subset to um, ensure that the modified software it works perfectly if you will run the all the tests that is known as a retest all approach but if you will go for the retest all approach by executing the full original test suit then it will take a huge amount of time which may be more costlier so then another way you can see uh, uh, which subsets will take out of 7 10 100 test cases say which 70 will take we have to prioritize the test cases so this is known as test case prioritization technique it prioritizes the test cases first then execute according to the priority we don't have sufficient time so we can rank them like 1 200 depending on the time the first 50 or the first 60 or the first 70 depending on the time those main test cases we can execute this is known as test case prioritization technique there are two sub techniques which are coming under test case prioritization one is general test case prioritization another is version specific test case prioritization in general test case prioritization we do not have any knowledge of the modification what modification we are doing we may not know it then if we we'll do the prioritization this is known as general test case prioritization here we uh, do not have any knowledge of the modification version specific test case prioritization means we are prioritizing in test cases by having the knowledge of the modification or the knowledge of the modification is known we know in which lines we have done the modifications then we are prioritizing the test case this is known as version specific test case prioritization and next is test suit reduction technique i have already told you i don't have sufficient time to run all the existing test cases i have to select a few i have to reduce the test cases for the regression testing so how to reduce that is called as test suit reduction technique 
it, it, this technique reduces the testing cost by eliminating the redundant test cases. So if some of the test cases are redundant, we can remove them. So this is known as test case reduction technique or this is known as test case optimization technique. All these three are three important research areas. Many people are working or doing research or doing PhD on these three taking techniques. Let's quickly look, uh, look at the selective retest technique. So you know that software maintenance includes uh, more than uh, I am discussing now the first one, uh, the regression test selection, or this is known as selective retest technique. In uh, the contrast is uh, what we can say a full retest technique or retest all approach where all the existing test cases I am using for retesting. But uh, the drawback is that it will be full, it will be very much time consuming. It will take a huge amount of cost. So that's why I have to find out, I have to select a subset of the original test suit. That's why the name is selective retest technique. No. You know that software maintenance includes more than 60% of development cost. In that case, testing cost dominate because many systems require labor intensive manual testing. Isn't it? Many systems require uh, what uh, labor intensive manual testing. That's why the the testing process, its cost uh, increases, it requires more cost. Selective retest techniques, what do they do? The selective retest techniques, they attempt to reduce this cost of testing. How? By identifying the portions of P prime that must be exercised by the regression test suit. Instead of uh, rerunning all the existing test cases, if you can identify how P prime is different from P, that means on P, what statements we have changed, what portions we have changed. If we can identify the portions of P prime, those are changed. So they must be exercised, they must be tested. Then we can only test those changed portions uh, by exercising the regression test. So selective regression testing, uh, selectivity test techniques, they attempt to reduce the cost of testing by identifying the portions of the change program P prime that must be exercised that must be exercised what by uh, that must be exercised by the regression test so so in that way now I do not require to uh, retest um, or all the lines of the P prime by using the all existing test cases only I will find out what lines what instructions are changed and for that which test cases have to be rerun only those uh, uh, subsets of the test cases from the original test suit, I will take it out, I will uh, take them out and I will run this uh, modified portions of P prime by those test cases. In that way, I have selectively collected the test cases, a subset of test cases from the original test suit and rerun them with P prime to ensure that whether the modified program is perfectly working or not. And then I can say that yes, the modified program P prime is working perfectly. Selective retesting is distinctly different from a retest all approach. I have told you that always executes every test in an existing regression test. Suit. The difference I have already told you in the retest all approach, all the existing test suits, sorry, all the existing test cases present in a test suit, they have to rerun, which will take more time and more cost. That's why we have to go for selective retesting approach where we will select a subset of the original test suit for this regression testing. This will minimize the testing. Uh, um, uh, this will minimize the execution of the test cases. This will minimize the uh, testing time and the testing cost. The objective of selective retest technique is cost reduction. How you can <coughs> reduce the testing cost? How you can reduce the testing time? This is the basic objective of selective regression testing, selective retest technique. It is the process of selecting a subset of the regression test suit, isn't it? It is the process of selecting a subset of the regression test suit, uh, which test the changes made by you on a particular uh, system or uh, the changes made on the uh, system under test. So it is the following. It minimizes the resources which are required to regress on test a new version. I have already told you it will the cost will be less, the time will be less. It minimizes the resources required to regress on test a new version. It minimizes the number of test cases to be rerun. It is needed to remove the obsolete test cases 
non-clip test cases and redundant test cases. This testing technique analyzes the relationship between the test cases and the software elements they cover. The software elements, uh, those are covered, they could be statements which are covered, branches which are covered, or paths which are covered, etc. It uses the information about the changes to select the test cases. How you can select which particular 10 test cases will be run by knowing the changes made on the modified program or on the original program. So by knowing the changes that we have made on the original program, by using this information, we can find out, uh, we can select uh, the uh, subset of the test cases from the original test. So this is the selectivity test technique. How does it work? Initially take the test suit T, then from this, what you do, that um, you test your original program P. Now you have made changes on P so that you will get P prime. So program P changed uh, feature, the new features, whatever you want to P, either some statements you change or some statements you add, etc. Then I need to change P prime. How? From this test set to you take a subset of T, uh, T prime, regression test cases from T. Then you test P prime. If it is does not, uh, if it does not cover all the uh, um, components, all the elements, such as or it does not cover all the statements or the branches, then you have to add few more new test cases. Let us call it as T double prime. Then what will be full test case? From T we have taken T prime, T double prime new test cases we have add. Now this will become my full regression test suit. And with this full regression test suit T prime and T double prime. I will test the uh, modified program P prime. In this way, this selectivity test technique, it works. Okay, so uh, 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 let's uh, quickly, uh, I think uh, we can stop here because already the time. So the detailed steps we will discuss in the next class. So the detailed steps of selectivity test technique we will discuss in the next class because already uh, the time is there. So let's stop here. So in the next class we will discuss this. Please have a look into this. So this I have taken from uh, Naresh Chavan book. Fundamentals we have taken from Rajimbal's book. Please have a look into this and we will continue in the next class. Thank you very much. Any doubt, please? Now let's see any doubt, please. This is the basics of regression testing we are taking. This will be uh, very much required. A good uh, research area for uh, those who will do MTech thesis or PhD thesis. They may continue with this. So now any doubt, please? I'll try to upload it. Please have a oh, this thing in the next class.